different, right? <laughs> Open a prayer. Father, we just thank you for the privilege of coming and, and seeing each other again and starting back in your work. I just pray for those traveling that you would keep them safe, uh, the accidents and stuff going on. I just pray that you would bless our time in your word this morning. In your precious name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, pull out your... You know how you have your lessons, and lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, so you can get the dates on them, because um, I think I put in my email, we gifted a cruise. Uh, it's, just, it's just a God thing that we really had a hard time going, are you sure? Because it is with David Ute at First Baptist Orlando, who's going one of Paul's missionary journeys in the Mediterranean. And the guy just said, I just, the Holy Spirit just is telling me I, I need to pay for you guys to go on that cruise. And we're like, that's Father's Day. He told us that. I'm like, I don't, that's just so much. And he said, well, if you knew me, it's really not. Okay. Could we think about it? Because <laughs> I'm like, this, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. But, you know, as Ron and I were talking, it's like never... When somebody wants to bless you, never tell them no. Because then that just ruins their blessing. Because we've been on the other side of that where people have used it. And you know God is telling you to do that. So I'm just like, I, he says, what's on the calendar? I go, uh, nothing. <laughs> I can't really figure out a reason to say no. <laughs> I'm like, me neither. So we're going on the Mediterranean cruise with David you to see Paul's missionary journey through Turkey. Tur didn't you go to Turkey? I can't believe we're doing that, but we're going to be doing that. And it's a two-week thing, so that's why we're breaking. Um, so let me give you the dates. Um, I'll with you today. It's the 18th. Uh, lesson two is the 25th. And then you've got uh, September... <clears throat> September 1st is Lesson 3, the 8th is Lesson 4, um, the 15th is Lesson 5, and then I obviously messed up here, 22nd, <laughs> the 16th, really, we're doing it the next day, I don't think so, okay, when is Lesson 5? Uh, lesson 5 is the 15th, and then Lesson 6 is the 22nd, and then you break until October 13th. I'm not here. <laughs> uh, and then you just go 13th, 20th, 27th, and November 3rd is our last lesson. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to see your face. And you, everybody has their book, right? Because if not, just tell people it's at the front desk. But lesson one is supposed to be done. So however much of lesson one you have done, that's how much you can talk on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> those, are, those are the rules. Um, I think I have any other announcement. Okay. All right. Uh, you're going to just be flipping through your homework, okay? So uh, turn to page three of your homework. Because this is your context, right? Context is king. So we're starting in Matthew 5. And I got to say, I'm thinking about um, maybe Matthew in January. Because we're just pulling out this. And you're like, well, what's the rest of it? How does it end? And why? So we might be doing that. I don't know. You know, just waiting for the Lord to tell us what to do. Because I've never done Matthew either. And I really hate to repeat. So because I just, there's so much out there to do, I want to do what I have done. So. Anyway, um, how does Matthew 1 start out? Lineage. Lineage, right? And who does, does he start with Mary? Does he start with Joseph? Why? Because Luke started with who? Mary. Well, because Mary. I love the fact that you both in there. I know, I do too. I love it. Matthew specifically writing for the Jew, and they trace their lineage through the male. Yes, they do, and that's a great reason. 
That is a great reason. To show his, that he's a true heir to David's throne. There you go. Because this is the human side. That's huge. That's huge right there. Okay. Um, you got the genealogy of Jesus, right? Oh, it's not working. It was working. Okay. Um, I'm going to close it, and I'm going to start it up again. Let's see if that works. You get him all settled, them all settled. Yes. Yeah, and then I ran into like 300 people. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, every every Thursday at 10, I'm going to leave for like 10 seconds just to take a meeting, and then I'll be right back. No problem. It'll be like a five-minute no thing. Okay, so we got the genealogy. Born of the Holy Spirit. Is that a weird... This is his genealogy, but he's born of the Holy Spirit. What do you do with that? Joseph's daddy, right? The human father in. He's setting that out, which is huge. So I don't know what the Jew does with that. Except that it's prophesied that he's going to be, right, a born of a virgin. Okay? Um, he's named Jesus because he will save people from their sin. Maybe that's what I need to do, you guys. Let's see if that works. Here we go. Okay. Um, this is all chapter one. What else do you have in chapter one? I mean, these are just some of the things I've pulled out. Prophecy fulfilled. I know you have that on there. Okay. Uh, yes, prophecy yeah. fulfilled. Oh, did I have that on there? I think His so. birth fulfilled prophecy, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. This one talks about the angel coming to Joseph, but never talks about his Mary. No! no it's, it's, it's all Joseph's Joseph. 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 I mean, it says Mary's pregnant, but it's all Joseph's side. Joseph, it's Joseph, him Joseph. wanting to divorce her, and then the angel coming, and it's just the Joseph side. Right? It's a Joseph lineage, Joseph. Story of Joseph. Mm -hmm. And the angel goes through all these chapters. And it's, it's always to Joseph. And it's Joseph. always to it Joseph. It's always the message to Joseph. I love that. That hit me yeah. for the first time when I was reading it. Because, you know, you get all the Gospels kind of mixed up, at least I do. I know? do, yeah. And I was like, wait, wait, what? Right? <laughs> Where did she go? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, he's called Emmanuel, God with us. What does that also do? Doesn't that fulfill prophecy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, he's already been born of the Holy Spirit, prophesied. His name is prophesied. His birth is prophesied. Okay. Um, this is the first appearance. Now, make sure that you say angel of the Lord. Okay. Not an angel. Gabriel. Who, who appeared to Mary? Gabriel. Yeah. Not an angel of the Lord. Right. Two different angels, two different people. How amazing would it have been if it were Jesus? Right? She doesn't know. It's like a soap opera. All right. You don't know that I'm your son. Uh, but I'll call him. <laughs> this is what I look like. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, Matthew 2. Since we're getting in context, what's chapter 2 about? Uh, the Magi. Yes. yes. Your overall arcing picture is the Magi. And, but how do we, and we don't know how many years, do we? Sometimes as growing up as a kid, I thought it was immediate. They just came right well, in. That's but what we picture in our nativity. We things, do. When you think about it. Right, that's exactly right. But what struck me, and I know I've read it all the time, but I used to, I used to think, oh, that was just kind of a mistake. They didn't mean to use that word. They came to the house. Right. Not the manger. Like, yeah, yeah, no. It was a house because he's not an infant. He was not just born. Right, right. right. Okay. Well, and plus we know that because of what Herod killed. Right. Right. So I, we kind of yeah. put that timeline together a little bit. Okay. Um, the Magi went, right, in search of Jesus, and um, Herod is all excited that another king is here. Oh, yeah. He wants to go see him. He wants to go <laughs> worship him. Um, why would he be threatened by that? His power and the power of his. Yeah. Okay. Because he's all about the power. And if they're calling him the king of the Jews, well, he's the only king. Right. And we can take my place. But if these guys are going to find him and do my work for me, I'm going to let him. Right? Go for it. Um, the Magi found Jesus, who had been born in Bethlehem, again, which fulfilled prophecy, right? right? 
they worshipped him, okay, but were warned by God in a dream. We don't know that that's an angel. We just know it's warned by God in a dream, right? Not to return to Herod. Um, so where'd they go? Egypt. They back home. And they that Joseph and Mary go to way. Egypt. That guy go back to their own country, wherever that was. Do we right? know how old Jesus was at that time? No. We don't have a specific, but we do know it had to be at least two years. So how do we know that? How do we know it had to at least be two? Or well, maybe maybe a little less than two. Because Herod, when he was speaking to the Magi, wanted to know when the star had appeared. That's true. So that would give him timeline. So they could start following it. And then when they didn't come back to him, he had to figure out the timeline of what he needed to get rid of. And he chose two and under males. Two and under. Okay. Is the star appear the night Jesus was born? Uh, that's what I understand. Yes. I, that, like, I mean, I know I've heard that, but is that actually scripture? Right, right. And, and when? And did the shepherds see it? Or was it just the magi that saw it? And then they followed it? Because, you know, I see the same moon that my um, sister-in-law and brother-in-law see in Indiana. And we so, see the star of Bethlehem now. Yeah. So it's like, and we're not in Israel. No. So, um, this again fulfilled prophecy. Does, does any human being have the possibility, ability to determine who they're born from, where they're born, and what happens to them after they're born as a, no. What they're named, no. Okay, again, out of Egypt I called my son. So he's fleeing to Egypt, right, because he's been warned by God in a dream, get out of there because Herod's coming. Okay. Um, Herod decreed, let's see if I can turn this a little bit. All boys to and under to be killed. Which fulfilled prophecy. Okay. Now, I don't want us to go by this really fast. I want you to picture a whole city and women wailing. Their mothers wailing because that's the grandma. Their sisters wailing because these innocent children were killed. And they have no power to stop it. Absolutely no power to stop it. Anna has a little over two year old and he would have been yanked from her arms and murdered. Okay, there's no comfort in that. But she's not alone. She would have all these other women, his little playmates. I don't want us to, to stop by that. These are the same Jews now that John the Baptist is going to say, believe on Jesus. Because of his birth, your child was killed, but believe on Jesus. That's just speaking from a mama's heart. I got a little bitterness, a little bit of anger here. Because you took my kid. And he wasn't even it. He didn't do anything. Okay, this may be part of the crowd. I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying it probably is. And as mamas, that's a little bit of a stone for me to stumble over. Okay, um, here comes an angel of the Lord, right? Again, just keep marking them in your scripture, okay, in your Bible, number one, number two, number three. How many, how many times did he appear to Mary? Right? Joseph is, well, we're up to what, number three? three. <laughs> now go back to Israel. Okay? God still had Joseph as the head of the family. Even if the baby wasn't Joseph, Don't you love still that? Had he still mm -hmm. had a household. And Jesus still it has to be subservient to him as his father. Right. Okay? Um, how, how special is Joseph that the Lord trusts him with his son? And he takes Mary. Well, he knows everybody else is going to be going. Well, she step out on you or takes her anyway, okay? And that story will follow them the rest of their married life. Well, like the Catholics, they worship Mary. You mm -hmm. never hear anybody worshiping Joseph or right. giving you know, credit. Like it's that's so true. They, and in our society, that's what they would do. Oh, well, Mary had a baby, and Mary raised a baby by herself, and she didn't need a man. You right? know, like that's how it would go. But that's not at all what the scriptures obviously point to. It's like Joseph, Joseph. Think Joseph. about that, too. God decided, Matthew, you're going to write about Joseph. 
I'm gonna get Joseph. Mary was credit. important too. She had a role, but Joseph was equally important. He, he was. was. He was leader of the household. Even and though then he, he drops off the story. Yeah. He died at some point. He there did. He had to die way. before he was crucified. So, but you know, that's yeah. thirty-three years. So, I don't, I don't know. Um, he was authority over Mary. So, yeah, and that's the household. Fine. But then why do Catholics only worship Mary? I see. I don't know. Why do they worship Mary? Not why do they worship Mary at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are Catholic. But yeah, it's Mary Catholic. Native Americans had um, different rituals and different beliefs, and when the Spanish came in, um, bringing their Christian Spanish came in. That's yeah, right. Bringing their Christian beliefs, the Indians kind of had hid different things, you know, instead of just getting rid of it altogether. And then it kind of blended over time. That's why you see the Mother Mary um, in Mexico quite a bit. Quite a bit. Oh, a lot of that's very true. Heritage. Well, a lot but of that comes, a lot of it comes from Europe, too, though. I mean, they. I lots think all of it comes from Europe because yeah. came from Spain. Yeah. Well, right. Spain is yeah. 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 Well, not just Spain, though, like all over Europe. Well, that's true. All but Italy. for us. Yeah. 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 Okay, so an angel of the Lord comes to Joseph, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Nazareth. We have fulfilled prophecy again. He should be called a Nazarene. Okay. All right, Matthew 3. Uh, Summarize that. I can only imagine, like, we look at Revelations and trying to, like, assume what's going to happen. The people back then that were trying to, like, expect Jesus or whatever this Messiah is, they're going, it's a Nazarene, the born. And it's like, how are we, how is all this going to come together? You know, like, imagine just that thought of, like, how do you put all these things together? I'm telling you, I am so glad I was not born in Jesus' time. I do not wish. I was. Because it does like when you read the Old Testament without knowing New Testament, it seems like it contradicts. One place says he's going to be in Nazareth, one place says he's born in Bethlehem. You know, like, I mean, right? Just but he was. But then he went. And then yeah. he went. Right? But that was it. And then he went to Nazareth. Nazareth. You normally, like, grew up in your you know, town. Like, you know, why would he. Exactly. Be, yeah. Right. If you're a Nazarene, then you're a Nazarene. Yeah. Right. Okay. Matthew 3. Summarize that real quick. Jesus is baptized. Jesus is baptized by. Here we have John the Baptist. This is John the Baptist. Right, and and in studying Luke, did you not go, oh, 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 because I, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad we're reading this, because this is Matthew's account, okay? Um, John the Baptist preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, not coming, is near. He said it's at hand. Okay, from Luke, what do you remember about John the Baptist's birth and all that kind of stuff? Well, he's three months older than Three months older than Jesus. Good. Prophet, Who's his mama? Cousin. Who's Elizabeth. his cousin, Elizabeth? He had the Holy Spirit from the womb. Take it. Yeah, an angel came to Zechariah and it was prophesied yes. to a mother that she's not going to have any children. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And so what What happens to Zechariah? He, he's mute. mute. He's mute. And he is named by God. Mm-hmm. Right. And what did the people keep wanting to name Zechariah? They want to name John Zechariah after his father. Exactly. Right, and what's the first time that Zechariah can actually speak? His name is John. His name is John. So his name is John, okay? So he's prophesied, do uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth know John's purpose in life? Yes. Prepare Prepare the way. So what do you think John's been hearing his whole entire life? Prepare the way. Prepare the way. (laughs) This is your job. Angel came. I was mute. Everybody in the village knows what your job is because we've been telling them, we've been telling you, so. And they know Jesus is Messiah because Sean jumps in the womb. So before right. Jesus was born, they already knew who it was. They knew it. Uh, who does Mary run to when she's pregnant? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Aunt Liz. Aunt Liz. <laughs> right? I stay there for a while until she's getting ready to birth, and then what does she do? She goes to Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, nice cousin. Um, okay, so. I thought, how old then is John when he starts his ministry? 30-ish. 30-ish. Yeah. Right. Right. What's he been doing before? Wandering in the wilderness. I don't know. I don't know. He was in the wilderness. Do we know how long he was in the wilderness? Not really. Not really. I, I really don't know. But he had quite the reputation, didn't he? Yes. Okay. He's uh, um, not somebody that's warm and friendly. I mean, I should say that. <laughs> Not even his outward appearance is warm and friendly. Okay. Um, he confronted the Pharisees and Sadducees. Mm-hmm. Friendliness? How did he confront them? He vipers. He was rather blunt. Which was a big insult back then. 
Yes. That's the form of joke. <laughs> but, right, right. Um, why wasn't he afraid for his life that they would just kill him for saying that? Because he trusted that God was going to do what God was going to do. And he was going to keep him around as long as he needed to keep him around. There you go. He Has he seen Jesus come up yet? No. Nope. So they're going to kill him yet? No. Nope. He knew his purpose. He knew his purpose. Whatever time he spent in the wilderness, I think he was communing with God. I and mean, he had to have direct communication. I, I mean, his parents didn't just teach him what he knew and, 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 and encourage him and prepare him. Um, the Lord was with him, of course. Oh, I see okay. like Moses' desert period. Yeah. That's like it's, Moses' desert yeah. period. Time of growing before he was called to go out. That's a good yeah. Paul Yeah, like it'll, almost every major feature in the Bible has like one of those periods. Yeah, yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. So true. Um, what do you think the Pharisees and Sadducees thought when he called them down? Do you think it affected them at all? They're mad. Anger. They're, they're mad. offended. They're offended. Is but I don't think they consider him worthy to call them anything, so they kind of blow him off. Right. Right. Because they don't see his worth. Right. Right? Okay. He's the crazy homeless dude that lives in the wilderness. That's exactly That's right. It. That is it. And now he's come out of the wilderness, you know, yelling this crazy it, stuff. We've all been yeah. shouted at by somebody and just gone, you know, roll okay. your eyes exactly. and roll the window up and keep going, you know. Yep. Correct. Yes. Got to keep weird people, too. <laughs> I want you to hang on to this verse. They produce fruit. You need to produce fruit that is consistent with repentance. Okay? I think that's 3 8. I think it's eight. Okay, that's going to be a kind of a key verse as we go through. Okay, it should be a key verse to us as well. Are we producing fruit that is consistent with repentance? Okay, because when we read in the Old Testament and it says, "Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin; without repentance, there is no true salvation." Mm -hmm. Okay, and repentance produces fruit. It, it is a 180, it is a change. Okay? Um, John baptized Jesus. Uh, very humbling experience, I'm sure, for John the Baptist. Okay? What does he say now? Permit it just now, because John goes, no, 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 no. Jesus says, permit it now, just now. For this is the fitting way for us, you and me, to fulfill all righteousness. Okay, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. Okay? Um, then he says the righteousness, our righteousness, because we're supposed to have memorized that in 520, is supposed to exceed that of the Pharisees and the scribes. At first reading and at first hearing, I'm sure they thought, how is that possible? Because I'm not even a Pharisee or a scribe, so that negates me already. Okay? As we go on, I think we're going to put a definition to that. Um, I don't want you to chew on that for a little bit. Okay? Don't also miss the testimony from heaven. What does a testimony do? You're called in the court for a testimony. What are you doing? Evidence. 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 Witness. Your witness. Okay. Eye witness. Eyes and ears. Eyes, ears, and you're uh, swearing that you're telling the truth. Whole truth. Only the truth. Nothing but the truth. Right? So the testimony, which is the whole truth, complete truth, nothing but the truth, eyewitness. This is my beloved son in whom I am not pleased. Who does it come from? God, the Lord himself. God the Father about his son. We don't have Holy Spirit yet. We're not even talking about the Holy Spirit, though we've done Acts, right? So we know the end of the book. Maybe we should say that. Um, he's not coming in here yet. That's two. All right, Matthew 4. Tell me a summary of that. But the Holy Spirit was like a dove. So the Came upon there. him like so a the dove. Trinity was there. The Trinity was there, correct? It's just not. So what's that? So what's that do? Right? Mm -hmm. Later. <laughs> not yet. Matthew four. The temptation. Yes. Okay. Um, Verse 
day, and remember we say Luke, the Holy Spirit led Jesus where? Into the wilderness. For how long? Forty days. To be what? Tempted for forty days. Not at the end of forty days. It's just how we learned it as kids. Right. And and who led him to do that? The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Okay. Now Matthew knows about the Holy Spirit because he's experienced Acts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think about these people that are, Jesus is just beginning his ministry. No clue. Holy Spirit hasn't come yet. Can't come yet. Can't indwell yet. Okay? Historical setting. Matthew 4 is really critical because this is the historical setting of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Okay? Um, then Jesus was led by the Spirit. Okay, we just talked about that. Do not call this the Lord's Prayer. This is what we've learned and learned and learned our whole entire life. This is the Lord's Prayer. No, this is the model prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in John 17. That I would be in you and you would be in me and we would be in the... That's what John 17 is, the Lord's Prayer. This is the model prayer because they said teach us to pray. This is how you pray. Okay, this was a cool thing. I went, oh. Say it. Um, you know, um, we say, Our Father who is in heaven, what? Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done on earth. And that's always perfect. So we want it here, right? Give us this day our <laughs> daily bread, and what? Give us our trespasses. Right? Then that can't be Jesus. Okay, because he doesn't trespass. He doesn't need forgiveness right. for sin. Okay? And then lead us not. Where has he been tempted? In the wilderness. How long? By who? Himself. Not one of his minions. Himself. So when he tells you pray, lead us not into temptation. Has he experienced that for you? Yep. Think about that the next time you say the Lord's Prayer. He wasn't teaching you to pray for something that was inconsequential. This is historical setting. This is back to back to back. This happens. He's come out of 40 days and 40 nights. And he's only overcome Satan himself. How? Prayer. And he quotes... Scripture. scripture. That is it. So has he taught us now how to not be tempted by Satan? And let it to yes, what are we supposed to do? Pray and read scripture. Pray and read scripture. Pray, quote scripture, because we have the indwelling Holy Spirit. He was God, right? We have God, so we have the ability to not be led into temptation. We have the ability to be delivered. Okay? He experientially knew this, put this in the model prayer because he knew we are going to need it. Okay? Um, he resisted Satan, right? right? Verse 12. I thought this kind of funny. Um, now, when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he went right to him and visited him. No. <laughs> Uh, well, what kind of friend is that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, not really important. Like, oh, this has been. Why? Why is it not important that he goes and visits him in the prison? His work is more important. His, his work is more important. And he knows he has limited time. He knows. And he knows John has done what John was to do. That's right? it. And he knows John has the Holy Spirit. He knows he's he knows he's not leaving him defenseless. He right. knows that God's got his back. It's not exactly. like he has to be there. Exactly. Okay. He knows he put the most important, the most important, the main thing, the main thing. Okay, so he goes into Galilee, leaves Nazareth. He came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. So in the scope of Israel, is he in the north or is he in the south? He's in the north. Okay, he's going to work his way down because what does he constantly say that we kept waiting in Luke? He was on his way to Jerusalem, right? He's on his way. To Jerusalem, so he's going to work his way down. This was to fulfill prophecy again. Okay. Um, 
okay? That's just kind of important that we keep seeing that he fulfills prophecy. Okay, so now John's message was what? Repent. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. What's Jesus' message? Same Same exact thing. It's like, oh, well, John's in prison, so now I'm taking over the ministry. Well, I mean, that was the whole setup, right? That's Mm -hmm. the whole John's purpose is to, now he's here, so don't look at me, look at him. Okay? Uh, I think John was thinking that when he was in prison. Because Jesus now is here at baptism. I know he's here. So he's starting his ministry. Okay? Um, And we do know that John clarifies that for himself. Yes, we do. Because he sent out his disciples and said, is he his? Is that him, or should we keep looking for another one? And do you remember what he told him to say? Tell him what you see. Yeah. Tell him what I've done. He didn't say, well, of course I'm him. He didn't say that. He said, testify, right? Eyewitness testimony, just like he got from heaven. What have you seen me do? What, how have people been? Go tell him that. Okay. All right, uh, verses 15 to 16. Verse 16, the people who were sitting in darkness. Get it? I just want to get a visual of that. Why do people sit in darkness? Besides sleeping, you're not sitting, you're lying down. Why would you sit in darkness? Hiding. Hiding? You're depressed. Uh, sometimes I want to tune out the world. <laughs> yeah. Just turn everything off. I can't handle it anymore. Right. So, I get that. Don't know what to do. What to do. Or don't know how to change the darkness. Think about somebody who's sitting in a completely dark room that's not familiar to them. They don't know where a light switch is. If you were to put it in today. They don't know where the light switch is. They don't know how to and change stop the that darkness. darkness. How to stop it. They don't know how to change the darkness. They're sitting in darkness. It's shame, too. Shame brings yeah. darkness. Yep. Well, to that, back then they didn't have light switches. They would have to have a candle. Light a candle. If you didn't have a candle, how would you change darkness? And if you don't have right. a source to they didn't have light a it, to you gotta go. Darkness. Right? Yeah. There's no source to get out of darkness. But now they've seen not just the light, the great light. A light. Right? And those who were sitting in the land and shadow of death, talk about hopelessness. Upon them a light dawned. So the light comes to them while they are in their despair because they have no way to fix it. Just can't fix it. So he comes to them. Okay? From that time, what time? Because that's the historical mark right there. Say again, Miss Joni. When he began to preach. When he began to preach, when John is now off the scene, now he's in, been baptized, right? Now at that time, he begins his ministry, okay? Again, he fulfills prophecy. Um, that always takes me back to Luke also, um, and the song we did years ago, the Because of Your Tender Mercy, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. Amen. Wasn't that a tender mercy? Yeah. Um, now, having returned from Israel in March, going down to the sea, you know, it's like, who's he call here? Fishermen. Fishermen. Four of them. Uh-huh. Right? So, this is historical. He's building his 12. You know he's going to have 12 because you've studied Luke. So, you know he's going to start with the four. Okay, uh, Peter, Peter, who's first call? Peter. Okay, and we loved Peter and Luke, did we not? Oh my gosh, could we relate with Peter? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. So who's he called first? Peter. Peter. Okay, don't move, don't, just don't lose that little ditty there, okay? Andrew, James, and John, they're all fishermen. Now, you know, James and John, Peter, they have 
crucial parts. Just don't forget who he calls first. And their brothers. And their brothers. And it's just weird to me that like he only chose twelve, and of the twelve, four of them are fishermen and really like brothers. Like you know, you think if you more diverse brothers, set right? of brothers. like people, you're gonna choose twelve, you're gonna make it more diverse. Right. Kind of right. surprised me. For me, it just says a lot for uh, the sons of Zebedee. It really does. Yeah. Two of his sons are called. Well, but we don't know who, who are Peter and Andrew's dad. Oh, they never no. said, they say sons of Zebedee, but then they never say sons of for them. I have. I bet we could They're brothers, find so that out. Is Zebedee, like, maybe more of a righteous man, had more in the story? He sure, had, he sure had sons that Jesus knew would follow him. I know, but Peter and Andrew's dad's not mentioned. No. 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 But no. You, you think about what he's calling them to. Right. And he knows it's going to be a difficult path. Exactly. They have their brothers. Now. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But they both have to be of character right. to be called. Not all of us can say that of our siblings. Of our siblings, yeah. Okay. We just don't want to be called our siblings either. <laughs> Look at everybody laughing. Look at everybody laughing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're not alone. Well, right. Everybody's You're got not alone. issues. Okay. Um, Yes, Jesus preaches the gospel, which is the good news. Keep in mind, it's repentance, kingdom repentance. John came preaching repentance. Okay, you looked up repentance, uh, page four of your homework. What'd you get there? Not to change one's mind or purpose, to change the inner man. The inner man. Um, to change one's mind for the better. Oh, that's what I like. I thought it was interesting because it's a present active imperative. Yes. So that's continuously you do something. It's a present active, <laughs> so it's continuously doing. It's not a one-time event. I thought that was really And it literally event. means to think differently after. To think differently after. But in a continuous so action. After repenting, <laughs> right? After and continually think differently right. than, mm -hmm. yes, okay. Um, Come that worthy of a heart changed, abhorring sin. Yes. Okay, now I'm having this discussion because, you know, things come up in my head. Thinking the law, did the law require repentance? No, it's just do, it's external. It's external, okay. I mean, it means you consider your sins because, like, you had to watch the, like, I'm with the kids when I was teaching and having them, we actually, like, had a little inflatable cow that we killed for sacrifice or whatever. And right. it, was, it was fun or whatever, but, like, it was, some of them were, like, didn't even want to kill a like, fake cow because it was killing something. And it made you, like, really realize the importance of your sins. Although it didn't make you actually repent, at least they had some physical thing that my sins are costing something, you know? And that hurt. Yes. Where we have it so removed, I mean, our sins did cost Jesus' life, but that was 2,000 years ago, and we just kind of brushed that over and dulled the nails and Good. just move on. Good. This is a deep question. There isn't just a... I think it depends you know on the person. Right. I think some of them probably really were sorry. They had to take their best one. Do you not think of David? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's just like... Our repentance today, lots of people, they think they walk down the aisle and say, I'm that's sorry, it. and that's it. it. Then they go do. They Whatever. Don't, they don't see the consequence of their sin. Okay. It's not direct consequence. Fruit that is a product of righteousness. That just keeps coming back to my head. Okay. I, we know that they didn't have the Holy Spirit in dwelling. I know, you know that's a given. I knew that. The law required them to, it cost them. It cost them something to, to go and payment. kill something. Is that repentance? No. Because what did we just define repentance as? Change your mind. It's a change of mind. Yeah. Okay. It makes you consider don't not doing it again because you don't want to have kill something, but it doesn't necessarily change your heart, which is a big thing in the book. So now we start talking about the heart of the law and the letter of the law, right? So what was. What was the law's purpose? What was the law's whole purpose? Uh, to, point out Jesus, sin. to point out sin. <laughs> Our need for Jesus. Our need for Jesus right. because does, has the law's requirements changed? No. So, so we're still supposed to keep it, uh -huh. right? Rosemary. What I found really interesting is that um, I've read you know, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, 
And what they say in there is that for man to change, there has to be a psychic change. Psychic yeah, change. Yeah, when I, when I was reading through the How definitions, I was like, oh my goodness, it's, it's saying the same thing. It is. Right. It was really amazing to me, and so true. Like, we tell everyone coming in, you cannot stop drinking, you cannot change in any way, unless you have a psychic change. Isn't that something? <laughs> I think it's Humanity crazy. knows. Yes. Oh, yes. Whether we yes. want to yes. attribute yes. it to Jesus and God yes. or not, humanity knows yes. this won't happen without that. So they call it a psychic change. We know it's an actual Attention. spiritual part of man. And, you know, they... Everybody agrees man is spiritual, physical, you know, emotional. There's three parts to man, but you have to do something with that spiritual. I think okay. it's like raising kids too, though. Like when they're little, you have to have strict rules with strict discipline. They don't, they follow the rules because of the discipline, which is what they did in the Old Testament times is they had to sacrifice. It was a sacrifice for them. There was a, you know, direct Thing. I'm going to add want your that. Kid, you want your kid to grow up to like follow the rules because their heart changed and they want to right. be a good yeah. person versus just always the discipline on there. Mine wasn't because I wanted to be a good person. I didn't want my mom and dad to be disappointed with mm -hmm. me. See, that's the heart change, though. That's the heart change. My kids aren't there. <laughs> but it leads to that. Mine is as long as I can tell, they don't care. And that is the temperament <laughs> thing. I am, I'm telling you it is a temperament thing. Two of my children, if you said, oh, I'm so disappointed in you, their world crashed. Two of them would be going, that's oh, really sad. That's kind of your problem. But God wants us to get to the, the temperament. Because I really think yeah. this is better. You know, yeah. I'm going to follow your rules because we live in this house, but I really think this is bad. There's a heart change there. See, they follow the rules to get along right. and to be right, right? The law required us, and I'm thinking out loud here, to follow the rules because that's what God required. I am believing in a Messiah that's coming that will fulfill all that because he said he was going to fulfill all of that. But he's not here yet. So I'm following that, but still, how is salvation? By following the law? Reason with me. When I very first got saved, Can't one of the things that really struck me was when Paul was describing that it's not, it was not the law, it was the love. And that was one of the first things that started to turn me. To Christ. Christ. Right? Yeah. Okay. Because. Now again, and I'm admitting my ignorance, I don't know if it's stupidity, but my ignorance. I thought um, Adam and Eve and Abraham and Noah and all those people followed the law and that's how they got saved. Except the law, those people were in Genesis. Law came in Exodus 20. Yeah. So, uh, how's that work? How does that work? I need to give an answer for your faith, well, okay? Yeah, it was. Tell me how that works. It's by faith. Hebrews by 11. Faith. It was by Hebrews 11. Faith. Their faith was considered righteousness. Right. Go, never forget Genesis 3.15. We're back to Adam and Eve, okay? He will bruise your head, but you will crush. No, no, he will bruise your heel, but you will crush his head. Okay, Satan is going to bruise Jesus' heel, but Jesus is going to crush his head. That's deadly. That's fatal. That's not. Okay, God preaching coming Messiah to <coughs> Adam and Eve. Okay, that's what they had because how else could, what would Abraham believe then? Abraham believed and it was counted in his righteousness. What did he believe? Coming Messiah. Okay. Who came through Abraham? Okay, salvation is always by faith. Always will be by faith. You can't change it in the middle. Okay, Old Testament people believed, and New Testament, no, 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 no. Salvation is by faith and faith alone. Okay. Yes. One of the words I came across for the definition of oh, repent was compunction, which is guilt compunction. and remorse and regret. Yes. And it's a feeling that you have. Yes. So this is deeply inner. Deeply inner. I heard, um, I heard one person 
preacher say when I was a teenager that if you've never been in tears over your sin, you might want to check your salvation. Yeah, I was like, you can't be saved. Right. If you don't ever fully understand the impact of your sin and what your sin has done, remorse. Then remorse. If you don't have full remorse, or did you ever repent? Right, right. And again, that's part of it, abhorring the sin, isn't it? So what does repent have to do with sermon now? Because he starts out with blessed, right? It's all about righteousness. All yes. about righteousness. Okay? Blessed are, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. And he starts with repentance before he starts the Sermon on the Mount. Why do we call it the Sermon on the Mount? Location. Well, Location. Right. Simple. Location. On the Mount. On the Mount. Okay? This is great. I'm so glad I showed Put up. <laughs> okay, here's a okay, trick question. Book. Why was the book of Hebrews called Hebrews? Because it's written Jews. Thanks. <laughs> Jenny, the first time I went to Israel, which was in the 80s, it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful setting. But the last time I went, which was what, five years ago, it was so commercial. It is commercial. Mm -hmm. I felt so bad because that was one of my highlights. That it was the first trip, which was 86, I think, when I went. Gosh. Okay. Now look at your outline, which is on the very last page of your homework. Okay. Page nine, I think it is. Because we're going to kind of outline Matthew 5 to 7. Okay. Remember that all of Matthew 5 to 7 is all one teaching. All one teaching by Jesus. Okay. Um, 5, 1 to 6. What is that about? 16. Sorry. 5 to 1, 6. Those are who is blessed. Blessed, and blessed, blessed, blessed. And how they're blessed. Okay? Good? I'll say I've always seen it as so many separate teachings. Like it's all one sermon, but it's like he has 10 different points that don't relate. But it finally hit me reading it over and over and over this week. I mean, literally, how many times have we read it? Like, I know. <laughs> and I know. think that, like, that it's, Which all is about, great. it's all about righteousness and God's standards of righteousness versus man's. So, blessed, this is man's standard of what blessed is, is versus God's. God right. blessed is not what our blessed. We say, hey, if you're poor in spirit, that's a bad thing. You should be happy. You know, like, right. so it's, it's all God's perspective versus ours, the whole entire thing. Good. Good. Um, am I going to get to. Okay, um, those who are blessed, and then remember that we're supposed to be salt, salt of the earth. Okay, who else was called light of the world? That, I, that one just broke me. All because we refer to Jesus as the light of the world. The light of the world, but he told you to be the light of the world. Light. But that's one of the names of Jesus. However, when he leaves, you know, let's jump to the end of the story, who comes? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So, that is what we are. Mm -hmm. Yes. We carry the light of the world with us. Okay? Um, verse 17. Yeah. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish but to fulfill. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away. When does that happen? Will happen. And it will happen. At, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. Okay, when is all of the law accomplished? The end of wrath. At the end of Revelation, right? Coming of, of the cross. Close. It's the second coming. That's right. Isn't it? See? I would think it's the second coming because in the Old Testament there's promises of the second coming. What does Jesus say? I came to fulfill the law. Fulfill the law. So after he rose again. There you go. Because, because what does the law require? It requires a um, a sacrifice. A sacrifice. A sacrifice. Perfect sacrifice. Perfect. He'd be our kinsman redeemer. That's it. Now our kinsman redeemer came. He fulfilled the law. So do we fulfill the law once we get saved? Uh, <laughs> pondering. I love it. Yeah. You sit on the cross. It is done. Yeah. It is accomplished. To tell us that. 
We have lived in the he built. Yeah, I don't good. think we live in the full fulfillment. And to well, that's the difference. All those are sanctification. They're sanctification when you're saved, sanctification throughout your life, and the sanctification in heaven too. We're not fully sanctified. Uh, we're not there. But you're redeemed, are you not? Yes. yes. In that version, yes. yes. I am redeemed. What is to tell us I mean in baking terms? The debt is paid in full. Paid. Paid. Yes. paid in full. So what did he do to the law? So when you ask Jesus into your heart, which is never there, but you put your faith in Jesus as Messiah. He is my kinsman redeemer who bought me back from sin. How do you do that? He died on the cross. Perfect blood, which the law required, did not. Mm -hmm. Blood, perfect sacrifice. Otherwise, if Jesus didn't come, we still should be doing the law, except he did come. So now when we have blood, right? So, because how is our righteousness supposed to surpass that of the scribes and Pharisees? Because we have his righteousness, not our own. Well, see, I read that differently this time. That's what I've always thought. But this time reading in context, it seemed like it was more talking about that the their righteousness is a man-made, man-perspective righteousness, yes. and God's perspective is higher. So, I mean, it's the same idea, but he's actually specifically pulling apart the two perspectives here. That their righteousness is not God's righteousness. It is not. Yeah. It is not because their heart is wrong. It's their righteousness. In their own judgment, not God. And again, when we get They're further into it, it's going to say, God's "Don't yes. stand in front of people and do your prayers. Don't stay right. going to your secret place because their reward had gotten in full." We, including me, I don't. I'm standing here. We do not walk in the power of Christ like we should. If He did it, it's done. My righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, which is unattainable. I mean, when I looked at what they did, there, it's just unattainable. I can't do that. I can't be that. But theirs was outward, outward, outward. When Holy Spirit comes inside, what does God see? Holy Spirit. He sees Jesus. Not me. But then we still work out our salvation. Sanctification is worked out faith by faith by faith, but my redemption is complete. Yeah, you can't become any more holy than I you cannot are. become any more holy than I am because the righteous blood of Jesus, fulfillment of the law, is all over me. So now, this is a really tough part, when I sin, it's a choice. But the I don't future like sins that are too. The, no, I'm not talking forgiveness whatsoever. Because he died, all of it's forgiven. That's a part of the church. A lot of people don't seem that they think they have to keep asking for repentance every time they sin. And it's no, right. future sins are already forgiven. He's paid the price. He's paid the price. But I do need to repent because I'm yes. going to see that again. Yeah, that's part of the sanctification part. It is. Only growing yourself. Because now I'm sad that I sinned. But it's not for actual right? forgiveness of your sins. Yeah. It's already forgiven. That's right. Payment's already done. Mull that over as you go into your study. Go. But I need, no, 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 no. Jesus did. I am. But how am I going to choose to walk? Okay? So this fulfillment of the law was accomplished because Jesus, at resurrection, at cross, yes, he paid for it. But boy, if he didn't rise again, he's just another sacrifice, bloodshed, useless. The church we used to go to over the summer, the reason we just left, the pastor from the pulpit said that every time you sin, you're, as a Christian, every time you sin, you're staying, staying in the hands of God. Ugh. And we, we, a couple people approached him after the service and pretty much showed him the Bible how that's not true and how it's incorrect. And the next sermon he went and re-preached exactly what he said before. Oh, okay. So that was the final straw on why he left. Well, I don't know. Thank you. That one's, that one's, that's a salvation issue right there. That, that's a security. I don't know you grew up with. You could lose your salvation. <sighs> that makes me a nervous yeah. wreck all the time. All the time. Um, okay, the warning. Uh, again, you're breaking down chapter 5. Okay? And verse 19. Um, right? Who, this is really scary. Whoever then annuls. So it declares invalid. That's what that means. 
one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same. So what you're saying, right? Shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But where are they? They're still in the kingdom. You had to get that. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Keeps them. Again, right? This is the fruit of their repentance. This is what they're producing. For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So you have to ask yourself, how does, because I'm going to the kingdom of heaven. No doubt about that. So how do I surpass that? Because Holy Spirit's inside. Jesus surpassed, which means I surpassed. Okay? We can't do it without Jesus. Uh, it, there is nothing Jesus. without Jesus. That's right. Okay? Now, then you started the, um, you have heard, right? Well, where would they have heard it from? Well, the the teaching, teaching, right? Teaching. Scribes, Pharisees. Right. But I say, okay, well, well, who are you? But I have heard, we ain't never done it that way before, but I say he's automatically establishing himself as God. The authority. The authority, right? And he's separating the Pharisee standards versus God's standards. Yes, this is what is. the Pharisees yes. say, what you've heard from the Pharisees. This is what God says. There you go. Simple as that. So is it that at the end of this one that um, he was teaching like one who had authority? Like one they had never heard of yes. before? Well, that's, that yes, was the chapter, chapter seven. seven in a second. Okay, sorry. In a second. Sorry. But again, this is a whole, I kind of keep thinking that. Five through seven is the whole right. thing. I struggled a lot trying to make it all like. I know. I finally got it. I finally figured out how it all like flows, but it took me a while. I'm like, it just seems like it's so broken. <laughs> right? Right? And again, think of how he started. Okay, he's got the testimony from heaven. This is my beloved son. In you. Now, there were crowds hearing that. It wasn't just him and John. There were crowds hearing that and seeing the dove and coming up. Okay. All the truth back then was eyewitnesses. That was pretty right? much proved anything in court. So Which having was that many huge. eyewitnesses, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And same with this sermon amount. How many eyewitnesses? Right, yeah. and keep that. Uh, I don't. I think I got. I knew that progression that he was baptized, and then he did the Sermon on the Mount, right. or that he had just been tempted for forty days and forty nights by Satan. Came out. We knew from angels that, or from Luke, that angels ministered to him. He gets baptized. He starts his ministry. He does Sermon on the Mount. I don't think I ever put that time together. Okay. All right. You looked up righteousness. Uh, page five of your homework, I think it was. Where'd you get that? Your righteousness shall surpass that of this righteousness. Were there scribes and Pharisees in this crowd? Yeah. 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 Ye
So again, it's the God. This is God's righteousness, not what you say is right and wrong. Our right. society today, there is no clear definition of right and wrong. It depends oh, no. on what your purpose is. That just makes you all messed up. So, because that can change. And I, I, it's like it's either right or it's wrong. I don't. I, you're messing me up. I don't know what's right or wrong. <laughs> well, that you decide. That doesn't work. That that, that doesn't work. That's why you're the parent you're and I'm the child. Processing and you're processing on this side, but processing this side, you're not allowed to do this. And okay. Like, so isn't it great that the righteousness comes from God and He's defined it in the law? Isn't and He that? never changes. He so never righteousness changes. Ain't never changes. I'm telling you, that's a relief. That is just a relief because sometimes you will be given a false doctrine. And you're like, well, that, that can't be right. Because if that's right, then this isn't right. Because this is your truth, because you know the truth. So when you hear the faults, you know, oh, that can't be right, because this never changes. Okay? There is no new revelation. It's that plumb line that Clay K uses. Right? It does, it's one straight line. Straight. Does not change. <clears throat> now, sometimes have you looked at religious people and thought, man, I wish I could. I wish I could be like Mother Teresa, or I wish I could be calm and quiet and mean. <coughs> you know, God didn't make me like that. But they look more righteous and religious than I do. So what's my problem? What am I doing that I should not be doing? Can you inside Can you inside something outside? Right. He tempered them to do the job he had for them. Yes. Jumping ahead, but when he says the whole like, you know, you call me Lord, Lord, and I did this in your name, I did this in your name, but you won't enter heaven. That's that's man's righteousness versus God's. That's yeah. man's righteousness. Okay, and I'm comparing myself to men. That's useless. That's totally useless. You can do good things, right? But they may not be the right thing, or for the right reason. And I don't know their reasoning, but God knows their reasoning. Okay. We can be deceived so simply, so easily. So righteousness is necessary to enter the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. right? So how are the, I would call, I always call them the Old Testament saints. Maybe I should call them the pre-crucifixion saints. I don't know. How did they attain righteousness? Through faith, the same way we do. It has faith to be again. by faith. Hebrews 11. Right? But see, I can't use a New Testament to answer my Old Testament question, sure. which is what I always wanted to do when I was in high school because I had lots of Jewish friends. I'm like, I don't want to lead it to Jesus, but I have to use the Old Testament. I don't have to do that. I do now, but I didn't. It was so frustrating. Um, their righteousness they saw in the scribes and Pharisees, which was unattainable, okay? Especially for Gentiles, because you're just not in the group. Sorry, okay? Uh, the kingdom belongs to the poor in spirit, those who hunger, hunger after righteousness, okay? And those who are persecuted, here's the clincher, for the sake of righteousness, okay? It's not just because you're persecuted. You may have brought that on yourself. That's possible. And I'm sure we've all done that. However, if we're persecuted because we're standing up for our belief in Christ, which is our worldview, shall we say, okay, then that's for righteousness. If you're just being persecuted because you did something stupid, that's on you. Okay? It's um, also God's righteousness, not man's. Because I know people that do lots of sacrificial stuff for things they consider right. Right. It's not necessarily Very right. true. what God considers right. Right, right. Again, it's the, uh, uh, hopefully it's the furtherance of the kingdom that you're looking for because you have eternal perspective, okay? Um, in that verse, we kept having least greatest, least greatest, okay? But like we were talking about Marianne, they're still in the kingdom. They didn't lose their salvation, okay? They're still in the kingdom. And what is least in the kingdom and greatest in the kingdom? I don't know. I don't know. I know in Revelation we know where the twelve are. Well, they should be there, right? Yeah. But I don't know what least and greatest and we're there. I don't care where I am. I'm there, <laughs> right? I'm gonna be there forever in His presence with all of my Christian buddies. Does it get any better than that? Okay. 
However, our perspective and our goal is to be more and more and more Christ-like. Okay? Um, they have been conditioned to think that their righteousness should look like scribes and Pharisees, right? Now, what do we know from our study in Luke about scribes and Pharisees? Or just your biblical knowledge. What do you know about scribes and Pharisees? Well, I feel like Jesus was against them. Yes. Because he, and it still happens today. Still. Like, I want that to be very clear. That still okay. happens. Absolutely. Today. Absolutely. It doesn't Our look church like is full of scribes and Pharisees. Oh, yes. yes. And, Absolutely. And they root your salvation in condemnation. And they root you in shame. And they root you in all of these things. And you feel saved and you're glad because you're escaping your shame. But it's your, your gladness is the fruit instead of it being the root. Right. And that, to me, is sick. And that is exactly what the Pharisees did. That's what Jesus still loved them. They, sure. well, he was the one I mean, that he put in charge of teaching his of children. Of course yeah. he loved them. But so, I, yeah. for the longest time, I saw it as all the mean things he said to them and never, like, put it on the But, like, I mean, he sat down and had one of the longest conversations with anybody with Nicodemus. Yes. I mean, you know, like, right. he was he was trying to show them their sins so they could come to repentance. <coughs> not <coughs> just they trying to... Yeah, everything he did was always in love. Yeah. Every single thing. That was a big was revelation for me studying Luke because I've always just seen it as he, you know, he was fighting against them. They were the enemy the whole time. And in a way, it was because the enemy was using them to try to pull people away. But he also said, "Love your." But he loved enemies. the people. Yeah, I feel like one could argue that the Pharisees were almost worse than sinners because they were leading people astray through faith. Well, and again, that's what he was warning about, right? Yes. And, okay. So that's why they were. That's why there was so much tension between them. Well, and you go back when you go back into nineteen, and the Pharisees were, were the high achievers. They had the yes. most knowledge, and when it talks about other places in Scripture, how hard it is for the people who are rich, or the and most people who are rich have gained that through hard intelligence work. and hard work, and so. If you come to faith, even one of those people who's built with that high achiever, that's how, you know, what the way God made them, that high achiever, then, oh, well, I've accepted. Now I'm going to work to make sure I'm higher in the kingdom because I'm more righteous. No, that's and so your you're striving for righteousness becomes a sin in itself, in itself. because it's, it's still viewed as a competitive thing. But like like Matt, like the sermon, they were trying for righteousness for the wrong reasons. Yes, and that's yes. kind of what he's pulling out. Yeah. Is it's not the same, it's not the same righteousness. They're they they're it trying isn't. to do the right thing mm -hmm. in their mind. They are doing the right the thing. Line. They're just completely missing what that right thing. Yes. Right, it is the motivation. Thing. It's all the motivation. Yes. right of the heart. What they didn't protect the temple in no. the way that they should have. No. Because when Jesus came in and overturned tables, right. and like the, you know, a lot of people use that sermon in, in a different. Probably wrong places. Right, right, right. But that place, there's a road before you enter the temple. And that is where all of those marketers were supposed to go. It wasn't wrong that they were selling. Inside. Everybody needs to be selling something because everybody needs something. Somebody needs an offering. Somebody needs this. That's sure. fine. That's why there's a road leading to the temple. Mm -hmm. But the place where they set up is where the Gentiles were supposed to be praying. Right. So Push they didn't. Them. They pushed out the Gentiles. They pushed out people, the world, who was supposed to be saved and finding righteousness and finding saving grace. They pushed them out. Well, now, for money. make sure as you do this, no, no, keep doing that. Don't keep doing that, okay? Don't keep doing that. Because you would get smacked mm -hmm. upside the head. When God reveals that hypocrisy, Pharisaic attitude in you about something you thought you'd be very righteous about, okay, that hurts. It's a good hurt. It's a good repentance, and it's a chain that's broken that you didn't even know was in there. But it's like, oh, thank you for getting rid of that. I didn't need that. I've had that for my entire life. Thank you. I don't need that. I don't need that. I, that was totally wrong. In my head, that was totally, totally wrong. And I'm not extending the love of Jesus that should be there. So be careful, because the more we do that, the more God's going to be going. And it hurts. It just hurts. Eyes in the wrong place. Yeah. 
Okay. The other thing about them is they were the ones, the keepers of the law. They, like, there weren't, they, they didn't have Bibles That's everywhere. True. Like, you had to go to They were the, the keepers of it. the law, which was his frustration. They inside and out where the people, they studied it, they had their classes, they knew a lot of it, but they had to Certain people, people were yeah. allowed in there. That's true. Certain. That's true. Okay. But, but you are entrusted with the treasure of God, the word of God. What are you doing? It's a huge responsibility. It's and huge. When you teach the word, there's the verses about how serious it is. And this is what they were. Teaching. This is what they were. So there's your warning that he said, beware of those that teach these, but don't keep it. Okay? Jenny, I never thought of it. The Mormons have many, many volumes that the volumes. public can't see. Right. So they're the they're not worthy to keepers see of the, mm -hmm. the keepers In the Mormon, the they're not worthy to see. The only some are. Well, even in the, even after Jesus, the, when the printing press came out, the people that died just to try to get the Bible translated just to get it, get it out to people, you know, because oh, yeah. you have power. See, and that's great work. history. You don't know that his, that that is so awesome that there were so many illiterate people, and then there, you know, uh, was it the Renaissance that changed that? Renaissance. Something like changed that. Gutenberg had the printing press, so everybody had scripture, could read it for themselves. Then we get Martin Luther, you know, it's, it's well, awesome England. to see that. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Did you? Yeah, it was all, all about the history of the Bible and getting into English and the other things. And we saw where people were going to the stake and heard all the stories of the people that died. Tell me. And you got to see the original, you know, first in the English Bible. Right? And yes, yes, yes. I mean, that there was, was a whole, good. like, it, was, it wasn't a museum. They, they, the England's theory. really bad. They've gotten rid of most of Christianity. But they, so, like, um, there was, like, this was when I was in high school. It's been a while. But, like, they were trying to preserve these original Bibles and stuff and the history of this because so much of it's getting thrown out. But the Scriptorium was a great place for that. We don't have that now, but it was great. Be perfect, okay? Well, you just went there. I have no problem with that, right? Be perfect. <laughs> okay, got it. Well, I already am, so. I'm like, be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Yeah, okay. And obviously not like the scribes of Pharisees, right? So we know we can, right? Now point back at yourself, right? Does this perfect mean absolute perfection? I hope you looked up the word because you know that in English it doesn't mean what you think it means, right? You know it can't because he's not calling you to that. It means full grown, complete, especially of the completeness of Christian character. Oh, okay. So this is the sanctification we were talking about. Ongoing. Um, it's illustrated really well by a pirate's telescope. As it comes out, 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 out. Then you can see perfection when it's totally extended. So think of yourself as being extended. You're just not totally extended yet. Okay? It's a stretch for sure. It's a stretch for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you've left that. That's chapter 5, and you're going into chapter 6. And he starts with what? Beware. 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 Except he told you just now to be perfect. And then he says, beware. Beware. Because what the scribes and Pharisees thought of when they said. I can't stop thinking of heffalums and wolves. I know. Beware. <laughs> now, <laughs> if he just said, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect, then the scribes and Pharisees could say, oh, we're doing that. Exactly. Because, you know, that's who everybody looks at to know what we're supposed to act like, right, and be. And that's our example. Uh, and then he says, beware of practicing your righteousness. Before men. Well, what are they always? Before men. Before men. Sometimes even little trumpets have to play that they're coming down the street. Oh, okay, what does the tribe Pharisee do with that now? It's like, oh, that's what I do. Okay, he's trying to get to your heart. This is what has to change. You're outward, outward, outward. Okay, to, um, before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Okay, that's kind of a negative, but what does that mean you have? reward. And where do I have it? Okay, and when I get persecuted for righteousness, where is my reward? Where what can't destroy? Oh my gosh, what does that look like? I don't know. 
but I know I've got it. It's there. It's getting stacked up, but I don't know what it looks like. I'm not quite sure. There's many views on what you're going to do with that, okay? But I really won't know until I get to heaven what I'm going to do with that, or what it looks like, or why I need it, okay? But I know that nothing's destroying it. Absolutely nothing, okay? Um, hypocrites in the synagogue, he doesn't call scribes and Pharisees now. He just calls them. Because in context, that's exactly who he's talking about. Okay, so if you're marking, you can mark them the same way. Um, verses 1 to 18, because remember, we're still doing our outline. You're in chapter 6. 1 through 18 is a thought. Okay, righteousness done before men. Well, that's your reward right there. The applause and everything, and the curtain closes, and that was your reward. Done. Virtuous righteousness done in secret and its reward. Those are the two opposites that you're looking at in verses 1 to 18. That's not only their reward, but then righteousness is through who eyes? God's eyes. God's eyes. Okay? Again, it, it doesn't go, if God declares me righteous, then I'm righteous forever and ever and ever. Do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Who's the them? The hypocrites. The hypocrites. Okay. Step, have I been a hypocrite? Because I tell everybody else what I need, I need, I need, I need. And I just, I don't have anything. That's what I just need. And, and where have I not gone? He already knew what I needed before I asked him, but I said, I didn't ask him. I went to, and that creates worry because then you may not get it because you really think you need it, but maybe you don't. Right? Just, I just continued to be careful of where I point, point, point. Oh, that was the hypocrite. Described that, but that can be me. And oftentimes is. Okay, if he already knows what I need before I ask him, does that mean he already has it? He always always has it. And if I need it, he will provide it. But what if I want it? Does he still have it? Mm -hmm. Do I get it? Only if, only if he decides you need it. <laughs> only if he decides I need it. <laughs> or you need to be taught a lesson by getting it. You're right. And sometimes I'm going to get it from another source because I think I need it. Right? That's not always good. Um, the model prayer. Easy, right? You knew what to label that one. And again, let's get that in our verbiage. Model prayer, model prayer, not the Lord's prayer. Okay? Um, don't store up. Don't worry. We're really good with the don't, 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 don't. I grew up my whole life like that. This is what I don't do. What do you do? I don't do that. But what do you do? I don't do that. But what do you do? Anything that's not that. That's what I do. Right? Because that, that way God loves me more. No, he does not. No, he does not. A plague on both your minds. Again, that was a hypocritical thought I had in my head till I studied Romans. I just don't get it. Better I am. More God loves me. No. More like that. This goes to the heart too and righteousness that if you're worried about something, your heart's not right and that's not God's righteousness. Right. If you're storing up treasures on earth, your heart's not right and that's not righteousness. That's it. I'm trying to tie everything back together. I'm trying to like tie it all back. <laughs> and lead that fruit of repentance that proves the righteous. Fruit of repentance shows your righteousness that right because well, I have repented and I don't do that again if you're known as a worrier that is not a good thing no. that's not a good character if you're known as a complainer that is not a good thing you don't want to be known as that okay if you're known as someone that walks with Jesus and steady on that's the character Again, not of someone that just always is perfect. No, but it is one that walks with that relationship 
And again, what do you do with that worry? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Put it away. I put it away. And you quote scripture. When that worry comes in my head, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and sound. Because worry makes me go wacko. And other people around me go wacko. Okay? Sound mind. Delight yourself with the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Right? Just whatever scripture, Holy Spirit, keeps coming. You just quote it till you believe it. Till you, till you walk in it. Okay? That could be a long time. It could be a short time. I don't know. Don't listen. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. Shows your lack of faith in God. I just see. I don't think so. I see. It, it's just my human weakness. My human. Oh, well, it tells but I have to pull it back. The, about the sparrows, God feeds them. Yes. Don't worry about what Don't you're going to get. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. So you're uh, my human weakness, but not my faith weakness. Because right. I don't know if this is scriptural, but it seems right to me in that I have had to walk in other people's faith for me hmm. when I just don't have it. I just don't have it. I think that's common. And that's yeah. not common. I'm not saying that that's a weak person. That's not. It's just somebody that's going through a hard time. And you know, here's the Moses where he had his friends holding up his arms. Well, I need somebody to hold up my arms because mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Can't do it. I also don't think that we should just live in guilt and shame for things that we lack because of our human nature. Right. If we're a cup, the Holy Spirit fills up all holes. Yeah. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. None. We should condemn them. Let's come alongside and build up. That's what we're supposed to be doing, building each other up. I condemn it. I, I get that out there. I don't need that from you. Yeah, of I love you, but I don't need we it. We don't live in it, but we realize in ourselves to change and get better. We have That's to actually. So repentance, it. isn't it? I mean, reading this, how many times this week have I been like convicted multiple times? Yes. I haven't lived there, I haven't stayed there. I said, oh God, please forgive me. You know, I'm going to keep looking go. at you and keep in scripture so yes. that I keep my mind focused on you and keep my heart in the right direction. And that's what grows you because. So I'm not living in guilt, but I am acknowledging that I am. So okay. that's repentance right there. Maybe the correct was word. Was when, it's kind of off topic, but I'm, before I forget to ask, what was Jesus's God, why have you forsaken me? Yes, right? He has been separated never, ever in creation from God the Father, except God the Father can't look on all that sin Jesus oh, took okay. on. He yeah. can't look at that. Okay. So, so he, he has felt to. felt separation. So I actually he heard that. felt that. He felt that. I heard a sermon yeah. recently I about how that's imagine. completely wrong because Jesus can look on sin and God can look on sin. The fact that the devil actually, you know, like he had a conversation in Job with Satan, who is the epitome of sin. So it's not that he couldn't look on sin. It was that separation of when, when we fall in sin, and you don't have that connection with God anymore. It's not the guy couldn't look at him. It's because that's actually so. A use that phrase. Kind of, God, uh, sin separates us. Yeah, yeah. sin separates us. When we're living a sin, God can still look down on us. Okay. He can okay. still see us. Okay. We just don't have that, that relationship sense? with yeah. Him anymore. Romans three twenty three. Yes. Yeah. All the separation. sin and falling short. That was an interesting when I read that. I was like, Ooh, I've said so, that so many times. Cool, right? Okay, chapter seven. Uh, I'll hurry, but remember, our video is only about twenty five minutes, and it will be consistent like that. There are an hour for this study. Um, okay, you got to remember, there is no chapter 5, 6, 7. That's not it. Mm -hmm. It's one continuous sermon, okay, which is so hard to get in my head because I just, I just try and not look at the chapter division and just continue reading like it's one thing, okay? From verses 1 through 6. Now, how do we end chapter 7 or 6? Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, take care of yourself. I need to memorize that verse. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Uh, I like 520, but I need to memorize 634. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Is that not another one you can quote? When worry, 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 do not worry about. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Then you can go to 633, right? <laughs> Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Just do that. Don't do that. Do this, right? And you keep reminding yourself, he cares about the bird, he cares about the lilies of the field. He didn't die for them. He died for me. Okay, okay, well, right. I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to worry about that. We don't really don't need to worry. Okay? 
Now, continuing the thought, right? He starts out with chapter six, beware. And then he goes into chapter seven, do not judge. Do not judge. <laughs> okay? Now, we're going to be a helicopter on this one, okay? Because I'm not going to get into, don't judge lest you be judged. We're not, we're not going to get there right now. That's chapter seven. We're still a helicopter, okay? Otherwise, we're going to get really bogged down. Um, don't judge others. Don't give what is holy to dogs, okay? Uh, pearls to swine. Sometimes that refers to the gospel of people who have rejected, 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 and you're getting persecuted for righteousness' sake. Move on. Remember what we read in Luke. If they will not accept the gospel, those apostles were supposed to go to the edge of the city and do what? Shake the dust off their feet. Right? Done. On to the next one. You have limited time just as they did. Okay? Don't, don't waste it there. Now, ask, seek, knock. That's pretty simple for 7-Eleven, right? Ask, yep. seek, knock is what you're supposed to do. What does that mean? We won't know yet. We'll land in that and tear it apart soon, but not right now. We know we're supposed to seek the kingdom. We're supposed to ask for the righteousness that is from God, right? Not scribes the Pharisees from God, or something that you've heard, or a great preacher. Verse 12, everybody knows verse 12. Do unto others, you have them do unto you, right? Yep. We're going to hear that part too. Um, and then the last, you got two gates, right? You got two trees, you got two houses. Why would he do that? He's, now think about him, okay, you got the Sea of Galilee, he's up on the hill, He's teaching to all these people. What are they going to see? Houses, for sure. Okay? Some that are closer to the lake, some that aren't. Some really palatial houses that are obviously not on sand because they're still there today. Um, what is he going to see in front of those? Because you usually had a gate in front of, right? So they're going to see gates. And then once again, they're going to see, you know, fields of, orchards of. Olive trees, probably. Right. Olive trees, fig trees. So they've got a visual, okay? One of the best ways of communicating is if someone can actually see what you're talking about and relate it personally. Just like Nathan came to David and told him the story about the lamb. It was the pet of somebody. And that person decided, that's what we're going to eat tonight. Mm -hmm. David immediately felt the emotion, and then the truth was put to him and repented. Just like that. He felt it. That's the best way of communication, which is why he told parables so many times. Word pictures. He's given them visuals, okay, as he's standing on there. Now, you had opposites, obviously, because you got, you got narrow and you got wide. Okay. You've got trees that produce, well, how can you produce bad fruit? You're a tree, you're producing fruit, why is it bad? It's sour. It's sour. It doesn't taste good. It's useless. I say it's not properly fertilized is how trees actually produce fruit. Mm -hmm. And bees have to come and pollinate, right? Otherwise you have no fruit whatsoever. So good fruit is the tree producing what it's supposed to produce because it's useful. The bad fruit is still a tree, but you go to it, you pick it, you peel it, and you go, that was awful. On the outside, it looks perfect. Okay. Hmm. See how he's getting them to feel that? Inside, it's nasty. Don't be that. And again, picture of scribes and Pharisees. Okay, inside, bad. Then you got the figs, right, or the houses. I know we're not landing, but it starts with do not judge, and then it says you'll know them by your fruit. So I'm going, is that judging? <laughs> like, yeah. See, I know it's like by their fruit. Am I judging them based off of their fruit? Correct. Right? Because how am I going to know whether they're false or true or 
Mm-hmm. See, anyway, we're gonna land there. I know. Yeah. Right? I was having really trouble not landing. I'm like, overall picture, overall picture here. Unbelievers <laughs> quote that verse to you. Oh, I know. I know. Don't they? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Totally out of context. Totally out of context, but that's okay. You know, let's start with where you are, and now let's take them to where it is in Scripture in the whole five through seven. Let's do that. Okay. Um, you got sand. One again, hurricanes for us. Oh, yeah. that wasn't so good, was it? <laughs> okay. We're just um, getting out of the water. It's just getting out of the water. <laughs> yeah. um, the way to life, eternal life, is narrow. It's narrow. Because there's one way. Oh. But we're all God's children. No, we're not. Get all that God's verbiage creation. out of your mind. Mo- yes, we are all created by God. Yes. We're not all God's children. There's the qualification in there. Wow. They, the trees are known by their fruits, right? I don't go up to an orange tree expecting to pick a fig. Um, getting an orange. Whether that's a good orange or a bad orange. Um, depends on the grafting. Depends on the grafting. Yes, uh, depends on, just depends on so many, so many things. <laughs> False and true prophets are known by their fruit. Remember, just keep putting that little 3-8 there, 3-8. Okay, fruit of repentance. It's going to come out. It's going to come out on the way you live and the way you talk and what you value. Only those who live obediently to the word of God enter the kingdom of heaven. Live as a way of life. Okay? Your righteousness must surpass that of the prize of Pharisees. How? Because you live... By God's righteousness, which is not, right, men, oh, you're told it's supposed to be secret. Now, that was interesting too. Verses 28 to 29. Those who heard Jesus' teaching were amazed at the authority with which he spoke. But wasn't everybody there listening heard? Didn't they all hear? Now, you can sit in a church and know, well, he's listening, but he's not. That's not back then, but you can tell by people's demeanor where they're actually listening mm-hmm. or they're not. Same here. Those who heard were amazed at how he was teaching. So not all that hear or listen. Your application, right? So do I really want to be righteous? Because that hurts. That money, that money, that really costs. If you want to be righteous, it's going to cost. It's not going to. It's not going to cost what it you know what it did the apostles and stuff. I'm probably not going to be martyred for my faith. No, but there are other ways to hurt. Um, do I really want to be obedient? Because you got to have that desire first, right? Send the choice. People, believers included, are watching. Do I want to be righteous? Do I want to be obedient? Versus, it's just, it's just too hard today. I just don't want to do it. Been there, done that. Probably do it again. Hmm. But it's a choice, see? Now it's my choice. Holy Spirit's right there. I can do it. Or I can just not. Okay? Am I simply hearing or am I intently listening? with a heart desiring to learn and then put into action what Holy Spirit has taught me. That's obedience. There's a difference between listening and hearing. Okay. Lord, may I not shame you, but bring glory. Remember, the glory is to give a correct estimate of who he is. Okay? To your name and lead others to your kingdom because of your fruit of righteousness or fruit of repentance. Okay? that they know can't possibly be you. Right. Then that is bringing glory to God because that's the true estimate of who he is because this is not possible. Right. Only God. Through God is it possible. Anybody else come away with something in there that went, wow, I never saw that. I never looked at that before. We have a whole lot of cross-references. And have you noticed that's that uh, pull out your observation worksheet and do the... Well, you didn't have that this time, do you? She's just telling you to mark some things, mark some of this and some of that. Now you can go 
You do your observation worksheet if you want to. I'm totally up to you, okay? You might actually have done homework for the next semester if we do Matthew. But it's kind of nice, isn't it, to just focus on that and then focus on that. And if something pops out at you, put it in the margin. You know, write yourself in like, Holy Spirit showing you that. No? Okay, I'll give you about a five minute. I'll, I'll start at eleven fifteen. So it's okay. If you need to leave, or go. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm gone.